Democratic Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester of Delaware is mounting a historic Senate bid. If elected, she would become the state's first African-American female senator. She already broke barriers when she won her seat in Congress in 2017. The Congresswoman is pushing a jobs and health care agenda. She is also a co-chair of President Biden's re-election campaign. CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian joins us now. Nicole, you spoke with a congresswoman for America Decides tonight. Tell us about her historic candidacy and uh, what did she tell you? Well, that's right. As you mentioned, she did make history when she was first elected to Congress back in 2016 as first woman of color elected to a U.S. House seat from Delaware. And of course, she is poised to potentially make history again with her Senate run where she would potentially become the first African-American woman, first woman of color uh, to be elected to a Senate seat from Delaware again if her bid is successful. And so I asked her uh, the significance and what that means to her, because again, if she is elected, she would become only the third black woman ever to serve in the U.S. Senate. Take a listen. It is not lost on me that there are currently no black women in the Senate. And so to be able to um, represent um, is important. Um, and also, and probably more as equally as important to me, is representing my state. Now, there are other black women running for Senate uh, this cycle, including in California, Michigan, as well as Maryland. Uh, but Lisa Blunt Rochester's race is not the only historic race in the state of Delaware. Just this week, you also have Sarah McBride, who is currently a state senator in Delaware, who announced her candidacy for that at-large House seat, uh, which is the one currently being held by Lisa Blunt Rochester. And so I also uh, talked with her about that particular particular race, because if McBride is elected, she could potentially become the first openly transgender member of Congress. So we talk a little bit more about that race and uh, Delaware politics. She sounded a little emotional there. I mean, very passionate. Um, you know, did she did she get a little emotional about the topic, Nicole? Well, certainly, I think, as she said, it's not lost on her or uh, other women of color who have tried to mount bids for Senate. I mean, just in the last cycle, we had, for instance, Val Demings and Sherry Beasley, who uh, ran unsuccessful campaigns for the U.S. Senate. But it is a goal that many have, uh, particularly in the Democratic Party, because many see African-American women as really the uh, backbone of the Democratic Party. And they believe that they have played an essential role in help propelling, for instance, someone like President Biden uh, to victory back in 2020. So they do think that that representation uh, matters and has been lacking in the U.S. Senate, whereas we see more diversity in the House. So it certainly is something that uh, Blunt Rochester recognizes, uh, but certainly not the only factor in her candidacy for Senate. Well, Nicole, we look forward to hearing your conversation with uh, Representative Lisa Blunt Rochester. Uh, but I want to shift gears today because Speaker McCarthy said that former President Trump may not be the strongest presidential candidate at this point. Talk to us about the growing tensions between these two. Yeah, that's right. Well, I don't know if we're there yet in terms of tensions. I mean, certainly the many times that I have spoken with Speaker McCarthy, he continues to defend the former president, or whether it's in his handling of the classified documents case or other matters, suggesting that in his view, he believes that there's this two-tiered uh, system of justice where the former president tr is treated one way and President Biden is treated another. Again, that's in his view. But what's interesting about Kevin McCarthy's comments is that it does seem to show a little bit of space, perhaps, uh, between them and that he he is suggesting that while he does think the former president could mount a competitive bid in 2024 and potentially win the GOP primary and potentially beat President Biden, as he said or acknowledged in a recent interview, he's not sure that the former president is the strongest candidate, which begs the question, who does the speaker think is the strongest candidate, <laughs> considering he has not officially mm -hmm. made an endorsement in the 2024 race? And of course, and now uh, with these new tapes uh, surfacing in reference to the classified documents case where we hear the former president on tape uh, discussing some particular documents. Of course, this is kind of bringing uh, that whole controversy back into the forefront. So on America to 
decides. We will take a closer look at the political implications, not only of this classified documents case and these new audio tapes, but uh, just broadly speaking, some of the legal challenges the former president faces and how that could impact uh, the 2024 race. Of course, we have a lot of candidates on the trail today from the former president to Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley. So we'll have a full wrap up of all of that coming up on America Decides. All right. Looking forward to it. Nicole Killian, thank you. You bet. You can watch America Decides at 5 p.m. Eastern right here on CBS News.